Hi, this is Mardi once again and welcome to my channel. Timeline of the Philippine History Eighteen ninety nine, Treaty of Paris and Spanish American War cedes Philippines to U.S. after payment to Spain by U.S. of twenty million dollars. Emilio Aguinaldo declares independence, then leads a guerrilla war against U.S. On December ten, eighteen ninety eight. The Treaty of Paris officially ended the Spanish-American War. Puerto Rico and Guam were ceded to the United States. The Philippines were bought for $20 million, and Cuba became a U.S. protectorate. On the night of February 4, 1899, shooting erupted on the outskirts of Manila. Morning found the Filipinos who had fought bravely, even recklessly, defeated at all points. While the fighting was in progress, Aguinaldo issued a proclamation of war against the United States. Anti-imperialist sentiment was strong in the United States, and on February 6, the U.S. Senate ratified the treaty that concluded the Spanish-American War by a single vote. U.S. reinforcements were immediately sent to the Philippines. Nineteen o one, U.S. captures Aguinaldo. William Howard Taft arrives at first U.S. Governor of Philippines. On March twenty three, nineteen o one, in an extremely risky mission, a small force of American soldiers led by B.J. Frederick Fongston, a general in the Volunteers, disguised as prisoners of war ventured deep into enemy territory and captured Emilio Aguinaldo, the elusive rebel leader and self-proclaimed president of the Republic of the Philippines. Aguinaldo took an oath of allegiance to the United States and called for an end to the rebellion, but many of his followers fought on. With Aguinaldo captured, the rebels lacked the necessary leadership to successfully continue the struggle against the Americans, and for all intents and purposes, the insurrection was finished. William Howard Duff was the first head of the Philippine Commission from March 16, 1900 until July 4, 1901 after which the commission's head also became the civil governor of the Philippines. Taft served in the office until January 31, 1904, when he was appointed Secretary of War by President Theodore Roosevelt. Nineteen O two, Insurrection ends. Taft improves economic condition, settles disputes over church ownership of land, established pensionado program allowing Filipinos to study in U.S., which helped modernize and westernize the country. The war officially ended on July 2, 1902, with a victory for the United States. However, some Philippine groups led by the veterans of the Katipunan, a Philippine Revolutionary Society, continued to battle the American forces for several more years. The war and especially the following occupation by the U.S. changed the culture of the islands, leading to the rise of Protestantism and its establishment of the Catholic Church and the introduction of English to the islands as the primary language of government, education, business, industry, and in future decades, and among upper-class families and educated individuals. In 1902, the United States Congress passed the Philippine Organic Act, which provided for the creation of the Philippine Assembly with members to be elected by Filipino males. Nineteen sixteen, U.S. Congress passes the Jones Law establishing 
elected Filipino legislature with House and Senate. The Jones Law created the first fully elected Philippine legislature. The law was enacted by the 64th United States Congress on August 29, 1916, and contained the first formal and official declaration of the United States federal government's commitment to grant independence to the Philippines. Nineteen thirty four US Congress approves the Tidings McDuffie Law promising Philippine independence by nineteen forty six. Transition to independence begins. Tidings McDuffie Act, also called Philippine Commonwealth and Independence Act of nineteen thirty four. The U.S., the statute that provided for Philippine independence, to take effect on July 4, 1946, after a 10-year transitional period of Commonwealth government. The bill was signed by U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt on March 24, 1934, and was sent to the Philippine Senate for approval. Although that body had previously rejected the similar Hair Howes Cutting Act, it approved the Tidings McDuffie Act on May 1. 1935 Filipino people approved constitution creating the Philippine Commonwealth with Manuel Quezon E. Molina as president. On November 15, 1935, the Filipino people took the penultimate step to independence with the inauguration of the Commonwealth of the Philippines. Only two months prior, on September 16, a million Filipinos had trooped to the polls to elect their two highest officials, the President and the Vice President. This was the first time in the history of the nation that a Filipino would finally sit as a chief executive and hold office in Malacanang Palace. Senate President Manuel L. Quezon and his running mate, Senate President Potempore Sergio Sminia, were elected as President and Vice President. While voters elected representatives for the new unicameral National Assembly and for local positions. 1941, Japanese invades the Philippines and defeats General Douglas MacArthur at Bataan and Corregidor. Quezon established government in exile in the U.S. The attack on the Philippines started on December 8, 1941, 10 hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Japanese troops landed at the Lingayen Gulf on December 22, 1941 and advanced across central Luzon towards Manila. On the advice of President Quezon, General MacArthur declared Manila an open city on December 25, 1941 and removed the Commonwealth government to Corregidor. The Japanese occupied Manila on January 2, 1942. MacArthur concentrated his troops on Bataan Peninsula to await the relief or reinforcement from the United States that after the destruction of Pearl Harbor could never come. The Japanese succeeded in penetrating Bataan's first line of defense and from Corregidor, MacArthur had no alternative but to organize a slow and desperate retreat down the peninsula. President Quezon and Vice President Ospenia left Corregidor by submarine to form a government in exile in the United States. General MacArthur escaped Corregidor on the night of March 11, 1942. 1944. Quezon dies in exile. Vice President Sergio Sminia assumes the presidency. MacArthur returns to the Philippines and lands in Leyte with little resistance. 
forced to flee to the United States because of the Japanese takeover of the Philippines in 1942, Quezon died in exile on August 1, 1944, and Vice President Sergio Usmeña was sworn in at Washington, D.C. The government returned to the Philippines later that year as part of the American reconquest of the islands. General MacArthur discharged his promise to return to the Philippines on October 20, 1944. The landings on the islands of Leyte were accomplished massively with an ambitious force of 700 vessels and 174,000 army and a navy servicemen. Through December 1944, the islands of Leyte and Mindoro were cleared of Japanese. Nineteen forty five General MacArthur liberates Manila and President Osmania establishes government. On January 9, 1945, the Americans landed and opposed at Lingayen Gulf on Luzon and closed on Manila. The Japanese fought disparately street by street to hold the city. From February 3 to 23, its liberation took almost a month, when at last the fighting ended in the old Spanish citadel of Intramuros. Manila was in ruins. Even after the capture of Manila, the Japanese fought on to the bitter end. The Americans made landings to remove the Japanese garrisons on Palawan, Mindanao, Panay, and Cebu. The Japanese made their last stand in trends in northern Luzon. General Yamashita, the Tiger of Malaya, did not surrender in Baguio until September 2, 1945, the same day as General Omizu surrendered formally for Japan on board the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay. While Osmania became president of the Commonwealth on Quezon's death in 1944, he was sworn in by Associate Justice Robert Jackson in Washington, D.C. In 1945, he returned to the Philippines the same year with General Douglas MacArthur and the Liberation Forces. After the war, Osmania restored the Commonwealth government and the various executive departments. He continued the fight for Philippine independence. Nineteen forty six, the U.S. gave the Philippines independence, and Manuel Rojas E. Acuna is elected as the first president of the new republic. Rojas was elected president of the Commonwealth in 1946 as the nominee of the liberal wing of the Nacionalista Party, which became the Liberal Party. And when independence was declared on July 4, he became the first president of the new republic. The Treaty of Manila of 1946, formerly the Treaty of General Relations and Protocol, is a Treaty of General Relations signed on July 4, 1946 in Manila, the capital of the Philippines. It relinquished U.S. sovereignty over the Philippines and recognized the independence of the Republic of the Philippines. The treaty was signed by High Commissioner Paul B. McNutt as representative of the United States and the President Manuel Rojas as representative of the Philippines. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.